वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विशाल जाधव असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी तिलक महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठ पुणे टुडे वी गोन टू लुक एट अ मॉड्यूल कॉल क्लास कॉन्शियसनेस इडियोलॉजी एंड क्लास स्ट्रगल ऑफ मार्क्स विच कम्स अंडर द पेपर क्लासिकल सोशोलॉजिकल थियोरी बाय नाउ वी नो दैट मार्क्स वॉज अ स्कॉलर a historian philosopher economist and sociologist who looked at how capitalism and modernity have come to be the main systems of modern society capitalism is a system which exploits the large working class he also describes how the surplus value is created through the labor of the working class of the proletariat on which the bourgeois build their large empires when this kind of exploitation is taking place why does the proletariat not question it why does the working class not challenge this domination of the bourgeoisie how and why does capital keep reproducing over generations without any resistance from the laboring class in this module marx allows us to peep into how ideology which is nothing but the dominant set of ideas of that time enable the ruling class or the bourgeoisie to control the minds of the working class in such a way that they do not question their own exploitation is it true that the working class is the bearer of a will and a capacity for radical revolutionary transformation is it a truism that people have an interest in improving the situation especially those whose lives are shattered by poverty it could be by means of individual or collective betterment in any society there are organized groups trying to promote the interests broadly conceived of their members there will also be many individuals who have strongly felt interest in some public good or collective action but for various reasons are unable to join forces with other people with similar interest finally there will be some individuals who objectively would seem to have strong interest in some public good although subjectively they do not experience it that way since the very origins of capitalism when the working class only existed in an embryonic form communism has appeared from the beginning as the objective the ultimate goal the profound meaning and immanent tendency of working class struggle marx's theory of class begins with a certain set of objectively defined interests created by relations of exploitation and domination in production objectively speaking people have an interest in not being exploited and dominated for most of them this interest can be realized only by collective action individual betterment by upward social mobility is an option for some but not for the great majority these situations give birth to the concept of class consciousness and class struggles different ideologies are propagated karl marx makes different statements about ideology at different points of time in his career however his most straightforward statement about ideology appears in the german ideology which he wrote with frederick engels ideology itself represents the production of ideas of conception of consciousness of all that men say imagine conceive and include such things as politics laws morality religion metaphysics etc ideology functions as the superstructure of a civilization the conventions and culture that make up the dominant ideas of society the ruling ideas of a given epoch are however those of the ruling class the ruling ideas are nothing more than the ideal expression of the dominant material relationships the dominant material relationships grasped as ideas hence 
of the relationships which make the one class the ruling one therefore the ideas of their dominance since one goal of ideology is to legitimize those forces in a position of hegemony it tends to obfuscate the violence and exploitation that often keep a disempowered group in its place from slaves in tribal society to the peasantry in feudal society to the proletariat in the capitalist society this complication necessarily leads to logical contradictions in the dominant ideology which marxism works to uncover by returning to the material conditions of a society a society's mode of production in the german ideology marx and engels offer up the possibility that one can address the real conditions of human existence outside of the ideological mystification or the reification of capitalism itself the premises from which we begin are not arbitrary ones not dogmas but real premises from which abstraction can only be made in the imagination there are real individuals their activity and the material conditions under which they live both those which they find already existing and those produced by their activity these premises can thus be verified in a purely empirical way the material conditions existing at a given period of time marx refers to as the means of production any given time periods ideology is most clearly revealed by uncovering the material conditions of production the means of production as well as the relations of production that is the ways the society structures the relationship between individuals particularly through the division of labor which together make up the mode of production life involves before everything else eating and drinking a habitation clothing and many other things the first historical act is thus the production of the means to satisfy these needs the production of material life itself for marx is the materiality of human production that directly influences ideology life is not determined by consciousness but consciousness by life as marx and engels explain further in the german ideology to quote empirical observation must in each separate instance bring out empirically and without any mystification and speculation the connection of the social and political structures with production the social structure and the state are continually evolving out of the life processes of definite individuals but of individuals not as they may appear in their own or other people's imagination but as they really are that is as they operate produce materially and hence they work under definite material limits presuppositions and conditions independent of their will thus far from being the product of the minds of a handful of intellectuals communist and socialist ideas were primarily the products of class struggle of the workers who first expressed their ideas anonymously and informally in order to grasp the situation and to understand the struggle on the basis of these collectively produced social ideas the utopians constructed their systems these ideas were long before the utopians very much alive among the proletariat which precisely because it had hardly just emerged from feudal or the pre-capitalist peasantry relations felt with an acuteness and clarity that were much greater in our time the scandal of wage labor and the subjugation amplified by the fact of being a free laborer that is juridically free of all servile and guild restrictions and therefore are free to sell their labor power to whom ever they wished but also free of everything that is dispossessed of everything and as a result separated from the means of production which had been transformed into capital in the hands of their owners the concept of class marx never said in so many words what he meant by class it is nevertheless possible to reconstruct a definition from his writings by taking into account what groups he refers to a class what groups he explicitly says are classes and what purpose the concept is to serve his wider theory and particularly his view that classes are the basic units in social conflict requires a definition that yields a small determinate and non arbitrary number of classes some thinkers like roma 
defined class is a group of people who all relate to the labor process in a similar way. For instance, all those who sell the labor for a living form a class and all those who hire labor for a class and those who work for themselves and neither hire nor sell labor for a third class. Things get much more complicated when one considers the fact that people have widely differing skills. Sometimes a class is defined as a group of people who all have approximately the same wealth. Though Marx tells us in so many words, those classes are not differentiated by income. Although members of different classes will typically earn different incomes, they need not do so. And even when they do, it is not by virtue of this fact that they belong to different classes. He also rejects the idea that classes can be distinguished by occupations of the members, that is by the specific nature of work itself is constituted of class. Finally, we can exclude the idea that classes are differentiated by status, be it by informal status criteria of honor or by formal criteria of belonging to a legal order. Having rejected income, occupation and status as criteria of class, four more plausible definitions become can be considered property, exploitation, market behavior and domination. All have been seriously proposed by the followers or scholars of Marx. With the exception of exploitation, all turn out to be necessary elements in the final reconstructed definition. Elster, on the other hand, maintained that classes cannot be defined by arbitrary cutoff points on a continuous scale. They have a real existence as organized interest groups, not just as constructs in the eye of the observer. Furthermore, he said that classes cannot be reduced to a dichotomous position between the haves and have nots, or the exploiters and the exploited. It is essential to Marx's approach that the number of classes, though small, must be greater than two because otherwise there would be no room for class alliances that play an important role in his theory of class struggle. There are 15 groups that Marx refers to as classes, bureaucrats and theocrats in the Asiatic mode of production, free men, slaves, plebeians and patricians under slavery, lord, serve, guild, master and journeyman under feudalism, industrial capitalists, financial capitalists, landlords, peasantry, petty bourgeoisie and wage laborers under capitalism. Again, Elster said that this list cannot really accurately define the concept of class as we need a general definition to check them, whether the examples form a coherent set. He posited that the immediate relations between classes are of two kinds. On the one hand, there is a transfer of surplus from below. On the other, transfer of commands from above. They are both exploiters living off the labor of the workers they exploit. Similarly, there can be a transfer of surplus from one exploited agent to another, as when an indebted artisan extracts a surplus from a few hired assistants and transfers it to his creditor while he himself remains on the balance exploited. Class conflict is typically cause of such immediate face-to-face -face confrontations. The theory of class consciousness. Marx saw the exploitation of the working class as a catalyst for change. He felt that the capitalist system of the time could not and should be destroyed and Marx called for a revolution by the working class members. However, before the revolution could occur, Marx felt that the working class first needed to develop what is known as class consciousness. This is a subjective awareness of common vested interests and the need for collective political action to bring about social change. Simply put, the workers need to see themselves as one unit and together could revolt and change the working conditions. The theory of class consciousness attempts to explain under which conditions the number of class becomes aware that they have a common situation and interest and moreover are able to organize in collective defense of those interests. It is sometimes suggested that a class becomes a class in this positive sense only to the extent to which its members become class conscious. But this is not wholly so. If a class consciousness is held to imply a clear formulation of the notion of class solidarity in the members' minds, class loyalty can be very strong at any rate in its negative reactions without the notion of class solidarity being clearly present in the minds of the most of the members. But class consciousness 
through which loyalty becomes a reasoned conception of solidarity without losing its emotional content is a powerful agent in strengthening the ties of the group. The sense of loyalty becomes the stronger for being made the basis of rationalist idea and classes become powerful instruments of change when instinct class loyalty of the majority passes under the leadership of rationally class conscious minority. Concept of class as defined earlier presupposes that there is an interaction between members of different classes by transfer of surplus or commands. It does not presuppose interaction amongst the members of any given class or a consciousness of common interest. Class for Marx is rooted in social relations of production and cannot be referred in the first place to the relations of distribution and conception or their ideological reflections. Although Karl Marx himself did not articulate a theory of class consciousness, he intimated the concept in his characterization of the working class. According to Marx, workers first become conscious of sharing common grievances against capitalists, thus forming a class in itself and eventually developing awareness of themselves as forming a social class opposed to the bourgeoisie, thus becoming a class for itself the proletariat. However, it is clear that class consciousness for Marx is a social condition in which members of a social class and in particular the working class are actively aware of themselves as a class. Class consciousness is a historical phenomena born out of a collective struggle. In this sense, Marx did not approach class consciousness as a matter of pure ideality. Rejecting any separation of theory and practice, he used the term conscious human practices to emphasize the conjunction of subjectivity and objectivity in history. In considering the class consciousness of the proletariat, Marxists are therefore not concerned with the ideas of individual workers about their position in society, no matter how many examples are collated and classified, so much as so with the following series of categories. Relations of production, conflict of workers and employees on this basis, conflict at the level of class which is organized through the political parties and the struggle for the state power, the theoretical and practical struggle to build revolutionary parties of the working class in conflict with non-revolutionary and counter-revolutionary tendencies in the class and their reflections inside the revolutionary party. False consciousness, the concept of I and me. There was one stumbling block to Marx's hope of a working class revolution and that was the fact that the working class did not see themselves as unit, but individually in terms of I and me. This is known as false consciousness. False consciousness is an attitude held by members of class that does not accurately reflect the objective position. Basically, workers would see themselves as I, as in I am being exploited by the boss rather than we. We are being exploited a boss. Marx's revolution to end capitalism and bring down the wealthy controlling classes would not come to light as long as the working class was viewing life through a false conscious framework. Class struggle. The way in which human institutions are adjusted to fit the requirements of developing powers of production is the way of class struggles. Marxian theory of social evolution involves not only the primary assertion of the overriding influence of powers of production, but also the secondary assertion that social evolution works itself out by means of class struggle. The form of class struggle are many and varied. They range from hidden manipulation to overt conflict, from direct confrontation between the two classes involved or domination to complex alliance formation involving three or more classes. The interest of the parties may be implacably opposed or in concord in certain respects. What makes a conflict into a class struggle is first that the parties involved are classes and second that the objects of struggle are interests that they have a class not as citizens or ethnic groups. Marx was mainly concerned with the overt forms of class struggle opposing two or more organized classes to each other. His analysis of the 19th century class struggle in England, France and Germany 
so for the most part based on the assumption of a triangular class constellation with in addition to industrial capitalists and workers a third force of landowners, financial capitalists or government officials. Although Marx believed that the long term outcome of a class struggle was shaped by conflict between capital and labor, the modalities of struggle are strongly influenced by the presence of these third collective actor, landowner, financial capitalists or government officials. In the Hegelian dialectic, development takes place always and essentially by means of conflict. In the realm of ideas, antithesis joins the battle with theses till out of the conflict a new synthesis is born. And this struggle is mirrored in the phenomenal history of men and things. Marx, turning to Hegelian conception upside down, took over from its central importance and assigned it in the notion of that conflict and equally with Hegel made conflict the necessary dynamic of social change. For the working class to become a class for itself requires not simply the absorption of the experience of capitalist society, but the critical struggle against the experience by a party armed with the whole theory of Marxism. Party and class are two interpenetrating opposites at one level. There are two poles at the same time constitute the whole of the working class which itself is one pole against the opposite, the capitalist as contradictory with the laboring class. Marxist theory develops by proving the concreteness of its abstractions against the apparent concreteness of uncritically accepted empirical reality. It does this through a struggle to change that reality, capitalism by placing itself politically in a relation to political consciousness, leadership with the working class. This means the struggle to build revolutionary parties able to lead the working class to power. Marxism is the struggle. To conclude then, this module has enabled us to understand how ideology or the dominant ideology of capitalism creates a false impression that we are all individuated beings. It also creates the false impression of the whole notion of work and leisure, something that capitalism creates also makes us understand our own life worlds through this hegemonic ideological framework. Capitalism also creates this imagery that the surplus value that is being created is something which is rarefied, which people do not understand. Marx in his earlier modules we have seen, Marx has also attempted to discern how this particular surplus value is created from the labor of the proletariat or the working class. In this module therefore, Marx talks about how class consciousness can actually be developed by overcoming this hegemonic ideology of capitalism. This class struggle will allow for challenging the capitalist system and overthrowing this gruesome structure which allows for perpetuation and subordination of the working class.